Hi everyone, welcome back. In previous lecture, we had a quick overview of DTO pattern. In this lecture, we are going to see how to use DTO pattern in Spring Boot application. Well, let me first draw the three layer architecture in a Spring Boot application. So first, we have a controller layer. So this is the controller layer. Next, we have service layer. Next, we have a repository layer. And then repository layer will talk with the database. And this should be a two-way communication. Next, we have a client. It will consume the REST APIs. A client can be a Postman REST client or any UI related applications, for example, a web application or Android application or, you know, desktop application or ISO application. Okay. Now let's understand how we can use DTO to transfer the data between client and server. Well, in Spring Boot application, we also have a JP entities, right? And we basically use JP entity to map object with the relational database table and the repository layer or the DAO layer uses JP entities to store the data into a database. And here client and server uses DTO to transfer the data between client and server. And some of the developers I have seen like they will use the JP entities to transfer the data between client and server as well. But there are some disadvantages of using JP entities to transfer the data between client and server. The first disadvantage is like transferring the sensitive information. Well, consider our JP entity has some fields like username, password, some codes, okay? And if we don't handle this sensitive information and our REST API directly send the JP entity to the client then client will get the password and all the sensitive information so this causes the security issue so security is the main reason why we are not going to use jp entity to transfer the data between client and server if we don't handle the sensitive information in a jp entity objects all right so overcome to this problem we can use DTO to transfer the data between client and server. In DTO object, we will keep only the required data that client expect in the response of the REST API. So in this way, a REST API can only send the required data to the client. So this is the first advantage using DTO. Second advantage is like client can reduce the number of remote calls to the server. For example, let's say in our project, we have a hierarchy. So let's say we are developing employee management system. And in employee management system, we have different domain, you know, objects or entities. For example, let's say we have organization and within organization, we have list of departments. And then within a department, we have a list of employees, isn't it? And for organization, we expose some of the REST APIs. And for department also, we'll expose some of the REST APIs. And employees also will expose some of the REST APIs. All right. And whenever client want the organization department and employee details together then client have to make individual rest api calls isn't it so instead of you know client calling these individual rest apis what we can do is we can create a single rest api and we can use dto to combine all the organization you know department and employees data together and rest api can send that dto to the client so in this way client can reduce the number of remote calls to the server, isn't it? So these are the two main advantages using DTO pattern. Well, in our Spring Boot application, we will use JP entity with respect to database to store and retrieve the data. And we are going to use DTO to transfer the data between client and server. Okay, we are not going to use JP entity to transfer the data between client and server. All right, so some of the developers also use a JP entities to transfer the data between client and server. But we have seen like there are some of the, you know, disadvantages of using JP entities, you know, to transfer the data between client and server. That's why many developers, you know, 
follow this design pattern that is DTO pattern to transfer the data between client and server. Alright, I hope you understood what is a DTO pattern and how to use DTO pattern in a Spring Boot application. In next lecture, we are going to implement DTO pattern in our Spring Boot application. Alright, great, I will see you in the next lecture.